Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I have an amazing video for you guys today. I found an article on CNBC today and check this out. GDP fell 0.9% in the second quarter, the second straight decline and the strong recession signal. This is crazy and what will this do to the housing market? Well, I can tell you it's not going to be good. If we jump over to the Redfin weekly housing market data charts, we are so basically I am only highlighting 2019 and 2022 because 2020 and 2021 were kind of like nutty. So this is like 2019 was somewhat normal year. But check this out. So uh, as far as new listings, we are in line. OK, we are in line with the average more or less. Now, when you go to homes sold again, we're still on the we're in the in the right peak. We're like normal if you consider 2019 as a standard but look at this the year to year look at that drop okay so this is kind of a big deal now if you go over to the new listing median price the price here this is when the feds more or less raised the rates and yes we have seen a decline but still prices are very expensive look in 2019 the average house around this time was 278,000. Okay, so 280,000. And now it's almost 400,000. So that this disparity in the price is most likely going to correct itself. I definitely predict this is going to come down. Because look, okay, at the end of the day, when you read headlines like this, GDP, GDP falls 0.9%. It's bad, guys. Now, it's not just like that it fell, it's that we didn't even think it was gonna fall that much. Check this out. That um, gross domestic product, product fell 0.9% at an annualized pace for the period, according to the advanced estimate. That follows a 1.6 decline in the first quarter and was worse than the Dow Jones estimate for a gain of 0.03. This is the problem that I see, is that the Dow Jones thought that it was going to be a gain of three and, and but that didn't happen we ended up having a 0.9 percent uh fall so that is the problem because now you're going to probably most likely see the dow like you know start to go down because it's worse than than we thought right the drop came from a broad swath of factors including decrease in inventory residential and non-residential investment as gov and government spending so we're spending a ton guys but we are not making that tax revenue to pay for what we're, we're spending. And the economy, unfortunately, looks like it's slowing down. Let me take some quotes here. Check this out. We're not, uh, we're not in a recession, but clearly the economy growth is slowing. The economy is close to tall speed moving forward, but barely. This is, this is definitely going to impact the housing market a lot. I believe and this is this is gonna start this is the beginning inflation was a root of much of the economy's troubles the consumer price index rose 8.6 percent in the quarter the fastest pace since quarter q2 of 1981 that resulted in a decline of inflation adjusted after tax personal income of 0.5 percent while the personal savings rate was 5.2% down from 5.6% in the first quarter. So that's kind of a big deal. The recession question, after posting its strongest gain since 1984, last year the US economy began to show to slow earlier uh, this year due to the confluence of factors. Supply chain issues brought um, brought about initial by outsized demand for goods over services during the COVID pandemic. And, and we're at the core of the problem. That intensified when Russia invaded Ukraine in February and more recently when China enacted strict shutdown measures to battle a burst of COVID cases. So you see COVID is still hanging around, guys. The, the fact that we shut down the economy for, you know, one, basically one year, uh, you know, or uh, six months out of one year for the most part, it, that is going to have such a ripple effect for the next 10, right? Because at the what ended up happening at the end of the day is that government printed way too much money to keep the economy afloat. And now we're going to pay for it pretty, pretty hard. Recently, economic data here, another quote, recent economic uh, data may not paint a consistent picture, but second consecutive negative uh, quarter for the GDP provides further evidence that at best the economy momentum continued its marked 
slowdown. The path for the Fed to raise interest rates without pushing the economy into a recession has become exceptionally narrow. There are now growing possibilities that it may have already closed. So basically, it looks like we're going into a, a, a dark time. The economy is going to slow down. And the, the, but the benefit of that, right, is that it's going to uh, level the playing field here, right? Like it's going to make housing essentially more affordable. But at what cost? I'll tell you at what cost. The cost is going to be possibly uh, layoffs, right? There's probably going to be some layoffs. Uh, there's going to be just people making less money, right? There's going to be probably small businesses, some of them going out of business. And it's an awful thing, but not everybody will get laid off. The people that have some money saved, right? The people that are saving, the people that um, are going to hopefully have a strong job and it continues to be strong during the recession, those are the people that are most likely going to have the best, best advantages in acquiring properties. Because when this comes down, guys, you know, again, you have to, you have to make sure that you have all your ducks in a row, right? At the end of the day, you have to have everything ready to go when the time is right. You know, I know uh, I have a friend of mine who, who has a great job, has, it, has had it for many, many years, and, but yet he's still renting. And I tell him every time, like, dude, come on. And then what happens is he doesn't buy it when it crashes. And then as it's going up, he's like, oh, I missed it. It's already too expensive. So he's always kind of putting roadblocks there. So, you know, so basically you have to take the plunge. If you if you don't already own a house, you know, it is possibly the best way to build wealth, family wealth, and it's going to be a lot of security for your future. But you have to make sure you could make that mortgage payment and you have to make sure that, you know, you're always basically bringing in money to pay for that right so that is that's the big thing right now is saving and getting ready because i think that this line is going to come way down and it's going to be the prices will be cheaper than 2019 so i could see this crashing pretty hard so get ready guys it's going to be very a roller coaster in 2020 to the end of 2022 going into 2023 we're going to see major major changes now stick with me okay I'm going to make sure you get all the latest data so you make the best financial decision. Now, remember, I make these videos for entertainment purposes only, but I love the market. I love learning about it and I love talking to you about it. Now, I love you guys watching. If you guys do enjoy these videos, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and go ahead and like and leave a comment. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.